Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shah is the true name of His only begotten Son, the King and Savior of Israel, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, Rakakwadash. It's the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. As we know, those names are in ancient Hebrew because the Bible was originally written in ancient Hebrew before being translated into English. And when our Lord Yahweh Shah walked this earth and was crucified, the letter J didn't exist yet. So his name couldn't have been Jesus Christ or any other, other stumbling block names because as we also know that in the ancient Hebrew, there's no J's, E's, O's, U's, or V's. So his name couldn't have been Jesus Christ or any other, other stumbling block names that they came up with to make us forget the true names. And also the Lord's people are from the chosen seed line. As I said, the chosen seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob got his name changed to Israel when he wrestled with the angel. And those are the Hebrew Israelites, the 12 tribes. And as we know, that consists of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. And we know that we were scattered around the four corners of the earth due to our transgressions, our disobedience to the Heavenly Father, and our past generation and this generation. So we were scattered amongst the nations, so we had the Israelite foreigners that may look like the other nations, but it goes by your father, so you are what your father was, not your mother. And the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. This is his kingdom for a season. It's coming to an end. It's written in Job 9 and 24, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. And as we know in this truth, the wicked of the Bible is Esau, Edom, the so-called white man today. That's the modern day furrow. Well, the top bankers, those are the modern day furrow because they're the ones who are in rulership. And this is spiritual Egypt. Like in the past when the Lord, the Most High, gave Moses the power to part the Red Sea and deliver the Israelites from out of Egypt. America today is spiritual Egypt, if you didn't know. But I was scrolling through social media. I rarely get on social media because I found a point on it. But I mean, when I do, I might come across a little article that I didn't know or something that I didn't know. So I don't know when this happened, but I seen that Young Thug and Gunner was the two rappers were indicted on Rico ch racketeering charges. And basically, um, it made me think about a few scriptures and basically gave me more, more and more understanding and reason as to why you shouldn't trust and build in, in this wicked kingdom. Because as it was written in Micah 2 and 10, this is not our rest. This is Satan's kingdom, not Yahweh Shah's kingdom. Yahweh Shah's kingdom, the Israelite kingdom is coming up next. It's going to be an everlasting kingdom of righteousness, not with wickedness like what's going on today. But first scripture I'm going to get is Ecclesiasticus 5. Well, Ecclesiasticus or is also called Sirach 5 and verse 8. It says, Set not thine heart upon goods unjustly gotten, for they shall not profit thee in the day of calamity. And me, knowing and listening to these rappers today, a lot of them push wickedness and basically murder and adultery etc things that's contrary to what the most high want us to do and they also promote drug use and they also still use drugs themselves or sell it Or do any, or do all types of things with it. So 
on top of the fact that them the rapping, they also making money off of unjust goods unjustly gotten. But like it's written, they won't help you in the day of calamity. And also that reminds me of too how the guys in the hood stand on the block all day selling drugs. They stand out there for, for, for but yeah, all day, but they, they can't, they, they won't present their body as a living sacrifice out on the highways and the hedges, as is written in Romans 12, for the Most High and His Son. And His Son died on the cross for our sins. The Israelites were mainly the elect. As we know, all Israel will be saved, but some of us will have to die. Well, the two-thirds will have to die and be reborn in the kingdom through an elect man. But, like I said, we're in these last days, so during the time of calamity, them unjust, them um, goods, unjustly gotten is not going to help during that time. I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 10. I'm going to start at verse 2. This was from this is written from King Solomon. As we know, King Solomon was Yahweh Shai because that's reincarnation. It reads, Treasures of wickedness profit nothing but righteousness deliver from evil. And that's similar to what the scripture I just read. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. So that substance, the substance is just going to go to, from, from, from the wicked. Just like Young Thug and Gunner are going to have to use their money to fight these cases that they about to come up with and no telling how long that's going to take how much that's going to cost etc in Micah 2 and 10 it reads arise ye and depart for this is not your rest it is polluted it should destroy you even with a sure destruction like I said before, this is not our kingdom. This is not our rest. So, mainly you should just be praying that the Lord gives you your daily bread to get through the day. Because this kingdom about to be destroyed. And also the dollar is collapsing anyway. So, trying to make all that money is going to be pointless because they're going to try to make everything digital. Which is going to lead to the Revelation 13, verse 16. And ultimately, as we know, if you take that C to the H, to the I, to the P, you're going to be destroyed. But that's why you must have your faith in the Most High. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Because they're the only ones that's going to be able to deliver you and save you during the up and coming Jacob's trouble. I'm going to read Ecclesiasticus chapter 12. I'm going to start at verse 1. It reads, When thou wilt do good, know to who thou doest it. So shalt thou be thanked for thy benefits. Do good to the godly man, and thou shalt find a recompense. And if not from him, yet from the Most High. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. And that's what a lot of these celebrities and, and rappers are occupied in evil, promoting wickedness. Give to the godly man and help not the sinner. And they also only help sinners because basically they bring in more sinners. Than they, they want the, the most craziest rappers, they sign the most craziest rapper, give them money and a record deal and and, and and help them push out more wickedness. People sell 
drugs to other drug dealers to help them hurt more people. Give to the godly man and help not the sinner. Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the ungodly. Hold back thy bread and give it to not unto him that he overmaster thee thereby, for else thou shalt receive twice as much evil for all the good thou shalt have done unto him. For the most high hateth sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly and keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. And these top bankers, the elite, the so the um the leaders of this world right now, the um the the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, etc., they know that the most I hate um sinners. And that's why they promote our people to sin and try their best. Put liquor stores on every corner, um secretly drop guns in the middle of neighborhoods so that people can constantly sin because they know as it is written in um, Romans six and twenty three, the raises a sinner death. Given to the good and help not the sinner. A friend cannot be known in prosperity and an enemy cannot be hitting an adversary. In the prosperity of a man, enemies will be grieved, but in his adversity, even a friend will depart. And that's why I don't never understand why a lot of these celebrities feel comfortable around these people because they be around a whole bunch of people. They don't know whether these people are envious or not. And they go around doing all types of wickedness. And once these people get presented with a large lump sum of money, just like they the celebrities themselves might have sold their soul to um, make it in this, be successful in this kingdom, them two friends will do the same things. Verse 10, it reads, Never trust thine enemy for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. And our top enemy is Esau Edom. <laughs> so you put your trust in him like it's written. Never trust thy enemy. Though he humble himself and go crouching yet, take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. And thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand. Lest he seek to take thy seat, and thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. And that's what they do. They want to shake hands with Esau Edom. They feel like they made it once they shake hands with Esau Edom. The so-called white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of. You'll see how everything changes when all hell is breaking loose, how much of a friend he is to you then. I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 30. I'm going to start at verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, to take counsel, but not of me. And they cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. They may add sin to sin. That walk to go down to Egypt. And like I said before, this is spiritual Egypt. And had not asked in my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and trust in the shadow of Egypt. And just like some of our wicked Israelites were trying to go back to Egypt when they felt like, oh, things were getting a little too rough when the Most High was delivering us in our past generation from Egypt, the bondage in Egypt. That's what they're doing today, trusting in the Egypt, trusting into, in Egypt. Trying to go back, oh, we, we, we were better off staying in Egypt in bondage and slavery than to be set free. Because contrary to popular belief, we're still in captivity, we pay taxes, etc. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. And as we know, America is also Babylon, spiritual Babylon. Babylon means confusion. For his princes are at zone, were at zone and his ambassadors came to Haines. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be in help, nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. I'm going to jump down to verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise his word and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay down, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. And our people, that's what they, some of them do. They trust in oppression. 
they they fall in love with their slave master because they feel like oh as long as they get the little small benefits that Esau Edom may allow them to get then they then they're good and he shall break it as a breaking of a potter's vessel that is broken in pieces he shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of its shirt to take fire from the hearth or to take water without out of the pit. I'm going to go to Mark chapter 8. I'm going to start at verse 34. And this is where Yahweh Shai was talking to his disciples. Because a lot of these celebrities, they sell their soul, as I said before, to become prosperous in this kingdom. It reads, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto him, them whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And that's what we're doing. Trying to follow out the Yahweh Shai to the best of our ability. And show that we're thankful and ask for, for mercy, ask for mercy of the Heavenly Father because of our wickedness that we've committed in our past generation and generation. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. And that's what we do. Some of us then lost jobs. Some of us then lost women, family, etc. for the gospel. But we don't care about losing those things in this kingdom because we know that we have a better reward in the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be established on earth. The elect that will be delivered. The 144,000, which are going to be all men governed by the ruling the world, along with the rest of the hopefully elect, the men, women, and children, the one third that believe on the, um, the names and the gospel. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And that's what they want to do. They want to gain this world and lose their soul doing it. That's why it's written, you should fear the one who can kill the soul and the body. And that's the most high. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels. And when Yahweh shot crack the clouds with Micah the archangel and the rest of the angels to destroy this wicked kingdom, those people that have scoffed and mocked at the word of this gospel and thought it was a joke and, 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 and made fun of the prophets, etc., they're going to be, the, the, the Most High and the Son is going to be ashamed of them. And they're just going to be destroyed. And then they're going to wake up with shame in the kingdom. But as we know, ultimately all Israel will be saved. But we're trying, we do have to go. We want to go with honor, not with shame. But... I'm going to get another verse. This is for the people that think their money going to save them. Zephaniah 118. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by fire of his jealousy. And as we know, that's going to be them nuclear missiles that's going to be shot over here when Third World, World War Three fully kicks off. Nuclear missiles get shot over here and it's going to be a lake of fire along with Yahweh Shah and the angels. It's gonna be it's gonna be a lake of fire. Everything's gonna be burnt up. So you building, trying to build families and 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 and, and make riches in this kingdom. It's all gonna be de destroyed by thermonuclear, the missiles and fire. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. So that's why it's good. To, it's best to repent and seek the Lord while he may be found before this time come. Because by that time it's gonna be too late. But as I seen that article, uh, I, what I, as I looked at, found out about the um, Young Thug situation, I found out about this other rapper, his name YNWM Benji. I don't know too much about him, but I found out that he got on Mother's Day, right after delivering a Mother's Day cake to his mother. <laughs> as we know, this is the Queen of Heaven worship kingdom too. They 
he was bringing a Mother's Day cake to his mother. Right after he dropped the cake off, went outside, he got shot up, and they stood over him. And, um, yeah, just basically made sure that the job was done. And also him and another man that was, I guess, a bystander was cutting the grass. And guess what he was doing? Preparing the yard for a Mother's Day event, I believe. And he got killed by getting shot by a bullet in the midst of that situation. But like we said, that people keep celebrating these pagan holidays, which pagan means heathen. That's the problem. People don't understand that the Lord is not planned. It's not no, oh, he's not taking nothing lightly. Contrary to popular belief, he's not an all-loving power that loves everybody. He doesn't love disobedience. Like, obedience is better than sacrifice, as, as it is written in 1 Samuel um, 5, chapter 2, verse 22. And rebellion is as witchcraft, and I believe in verse 23. You can check it out. 1 Samuel 15, verse 22 and 23. Read it as it is written. Blessed is he that readeth. But I'm going to go to Second Edges chapter 9. I'm going to jump down to verse... Um, 12 it said the same must know it after death by pain and that's how some people will have to find out death by pain when you when you Bashim you have shot destroy them by pain they're gonna have to die a grievous death to understand that this wasn't a game especially during these times but as always I want to give all praises honor and glory to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah Bahashim also I want to give a Double honors to the apostles and elders, the great millstone, who teach and rule well, who I learn from daily, Lord willing, and shalom to the hopeful elect.